Hello, these are flipped notes 3 2, and we are looking into vision and specifically the anatomy of vision. Get it? We're looking into it. All right, let's get into it. So, the key part of this section is understanding the anatomy of the eye and the function of all of the main parts. The main ones that we look at are not actually every single one that are on here, but we look at the pupil, the cornea, the iris, the lens, the vitreous chamber, also called the vitreous body the retina, the fovea, and the optic nerve. We also do throw in the blind spot. So when light enters the eye, because light is what is necessary for vision to occur, it first hits the cornea. The cornea is the clear outside layer of the eye. It's filled with lots of pain receptors. So anytime something gets in your eye, whether it's just a piece of dust or an eyelash or something actually touches your eye, you're feeling it with your cornea, and it can be really painful if something scratches your cornea. Next, light goes through the pupil and the iris. The pupil we know is the dark part of our eye, and you'll recall from when we talked all about the fight or flight response that it can dilate and constrict. Well, it is the iris, the colored part of the eye, that helps that dilation to happen. The iris works as a muscle that can control how much light enters through the pupil. The next area where light travels uh, is through the lens. Uh, and the lens helps to focus light on the retina. It's also going to flip the image to what is seen on the retina. Before that, light will travel through, I like to call it the meat of the eye, but it's the whole middle part. Our eyes are not hollow. They're filled with what's called vitreous fluid. Um, and the eye kind of has sort of like a gelatin consistency to it, a little more solid than that. Uh, but that's that vitreous body that helps it to kind of hold its shape. The back layer of the eye, the retina, is truly important. The retina contains visual sensory receptors, and we'll go into a lot more detail about those here in just a minute. Um, the fovea is the sharpest point of our vision. It is actually the direct back of the eye, uh, and that area contains the most photoreceptors for seeing. Uh, we have a blind spot, which is actually where the optic nerve leaves the eye. And it's called the blind spot because you can't see anything from there. There's no light receptors there. So then we have a neural message that has been created that will travel from the optic nerve to the brain. Uh, let's see, let me move this. <clears throat> so another view of the eye here, looking at uh, the front of the eye, because the other view is from the top. Um, again, the cornea is clear, so we're not going to see anything there. Uh, then light travels through the pupil, which is adjusted or dilated and constricted uh, through the work of the iris, which is also the colored part of the eye. There's that lens again, another kind of clear area, but this part is flexible. Our vitreous body that's filled with vitreous fluid, and then the retina, the back layer of the eye. Um, here we have our optic nerve. It actually looks more like a nerve here that's traveling to the brain. So the cornea, again, we often consider, call it the window of the eye because it's the first place where light comes in uh, and the image is flipped there. Many pain receptors there. Uh, the pupil, the opening, the iris regulates the amount of light. The lens is flexible and transparent. Uh, when people get LASIK eye surgery, it's usually adjusting uh, kind of the shape of that lens. Uh, and then the retina, the innermost coating of the back of the eye, and that's a truly special part of the eye. That's where the magic happens. Uh, and that magic that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about is called transduction. On the AP test, you can't say the magic. you got to say the transduction. All right. And then here's just a quick little image of how you might see something like a rose, uh, but it's flipped by the time it gets through the eye. So why don't we see things upside down or are we seeing everything upside down, but we just don't realize it. Um, but our brains per allows us to organize all that information so that it's right side up. And we'll talk about all that with perception, which is later in this same chapter. All right. So more detail about this retina. That's that back layer of the eye again. So the retina is filled with light receptors, uh, light sensitive inner surface containing receptors, and we call them rods and cones. Uh, and then there are other neurons there called bipolar and ganglion cells, and they all help to process that light and convert it into a neural signal because our brain doesn't understand light. Our brain understands action potentials and neural signals. So the eye, the retina, is converting that light wave into a neural signal that the brain can understand, and that's what I refer to as the magic. 
the light travels to the back of the retina and then it actually moves forward. Uh, it moves forward and this image doesn't show up well, but it moves forward um, through the rods and the cones, uh, then the bipolar cells, the ganglion cells, and then to the optic nerve. So we've got some more details about cones here. Um, so our cones, we have two types of light receptors um, on the retina. The cones are what are required for color vision. They require more light uh, than, the rods, uh, than the rods do. So they work best in daylight. So I think of it as like if you're gonna take a colored picture that you'd wanna have a lot more light. Uh, you have about six to seven million cones. Your other light receptors are called rods uh, and they work better for night vision. Um, so they help us to see black and white. Uh, and they're more concentrated in the peripheral areas of our retina. So our peripheral vision tends to be more grayscale or black and white. We have way more rods, 75 to 150 million. So cones, not as many, but they're way more powerful when it comes to vision. Um, and they're for color vision. Rods, black and white, we have way more, but they're not as powerful. And we'll see why here in just a second. Um, so light travels all the way to the back of the eye, the retina here, uh, the back layer of the retina. Then it comes forward through these rods and cones. And then here are these bipolar cells. So these are actually neurons, but the neurons that you're more familiar with were unipolar because they only had one axon. Bipolar neurons have double axons. Then next we have ganglion cells. Let's see, is that labeled on here? Oh yeah, down here it's labeled. We have the ganglion cells uh, and then the long fiber, the long axon of the ganglion cells actually eventually weave together to form um, the optic nerve. And then right in here is where that magic is happening, where it's going from a light wave to a neural impulse. Here's why we call them rods and cones, because look at their actual shape. So the rods, which again, we have way more of, um, are for grayscale, black and white vision are actually cylindrical in shape. And then the cones, they look like little Christmas trees. Notice that each cone is directly connected to its own bipolar cell, and then it meets up with a ganglion cell. Whereas the rods here, there's three to one. Um, so that's part of why they don't see as clearly is that they don't have that direct connection with the next cell. Also notice here, there's only three colors. There's red, green, and blue. And there's a reason for that that we'll get to in the next section when it comes to explaining what colors we can see. So again, those rods are sensitive to light, the cones are sensitive to color and fine detail, and then here again we can see those um, rods being share, sharing a bipolar cell, whereas the cones have a direct connection. So the cones are going to give us more fine detail in the images that they create. Um, a little bit more about those bipolar cells and the ganglion cells. The bipolar cells, they're continuing on that message from the rods and the cones, and then they're transmitting them to the ganglion cells. The ganglion cells then go on to form the optic nerve. And as mentioned, the cones each have their own bipolar cell, uh, and the rods have to share one, so their message is not going to be sent as clearly. All right, so you do have to know in this section what we call the visual pathway. Um, which means the order that light is passing through the eye and the order that the neural image or the neural signal is passing through the eye. So we already had cornea, pupil, lens, vitreous body, retina. Once we get to the retina, now the light is passing through the rods and the cones, then it goes to the bipolar cells, and then the ganglion cells where, ta-da, transduction happens, the magic. So whenever we say transduction, we mean the conversion of a light stimuli into a neural impulse that the brain can process. So this is a super important part um, of vision because we're going from light stimuli from the environment to a neural signal that the brain can actually process. Now that we have that neural signal, it can exit the eye or go out the eye through the optic nerve. So the ends of the ganglion cells, the axons, weave together sort of like a braid and they form the optic nerve, which is really a whole bunch of other nerves tied together. So now that neural impulse is traveling down the optic nerve, it's exiting out of our eyeball behind our eyes to a crisscross called the optic chiasm. We'll look at this in a second. Then that signal goes to the thalamus. And if you recall from the last chapter, the thalamus relays the signal to the correct lobes of the brain. So the thalamus is gonna send that neural signal to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe. So this is kind of a weird angle, uh, but looking down on your brain and your eyeballs. 
So here we have the eye. Here's that optic nerve where it exits the eye. And behind our eyeballs up there is that optic chiasm. This is where the signal is crisscrossing to the other side of the brain. This kind of little bump right here, that's our thalamus. Uh, and the thalamus is saying, oh, that's a visual signal. You go to the occipital lobe, it's that thalamus, remember that lamb that's relaying the signal. It's sending it to the occipital lobe back here. We have a right eyeball sending images to our left occipital lobe and our left eyeball sending images to our right occipital lobe. And specifically the visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Um, so the nerve fibers from each eye meet at what is known as the optic chiasm. The fibers from the inside half of each retina then cross over to the opposite side of the brain. So let's go over the full visual pathway, and you definitely want to write this in your flipped note. So light enters through the cornea, the window of the eye. Uh, then the pupil constricts or dilates to adjust the amount of light that comes into the eye. Um, then the lens helps to focus the image onto the retina. Uh, then the retina processes that light through the rods and the cones, uh, and they help us to see color or black and white uh, images. Then the bipolar cells pass the signal to the ganglion cells. And the ganglion cells, is all the magic happens, and it is transduced into a neural signal. We have magic. So now we have a neural signal traveling down the optic nerve. It's exiting the eyeball. It's crisscrossing at the optic chiasm, that neural signal gets passed to the thalamus, and then the thalamus relays it to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Um, you do need to know the order. AP tests have actually, they've never included the whole entire order, but they've included like pieces of it where there might be three or four of these things in a multiple choice question, and you have to say what order those things happen in. All right, that's it for 3-2, the vision anatomy.